This is what the original XK fuss was all about. 4.2 litres, six cylinders, twin overhead cams, and three SU carburettors. It's gorgeous, isn't it? And that can get you from 0 to 60 in 7.2 seconds and reach a top speed of 150 miles an hour. Well, actually, that's only nearly the truth. When the press reviewed the original E-Type, the car had, well, let's say, been tweaked and when it eventually reached the customer, it was only good for a mere 142 miles an hour. Open up the XK8 and you'll find one of these. I'll try and say it in one breath. It's a new all aluminium AJ V8 4 litre 32 valve quad cam engine. And it's all covered in black plastic. Jaguar claims a 0 to 60 of 6.7 and a top speed of 154. And I've no reason to doubt their word. Hmm third of a century on and just 12 miles an hour more. But with the average age of a Jaguar owner at 53, would more performance be advisable anyway? Forget figures like that for now and just take a look at these cars side by side. Jaguar have deliberately reawakened the old styling cliches and they talk about the long feline body, the low oval grille and the power bulge. <laughs> oh yes, I can see all that, although this is much wider. Still, they both have a high waistline for that snug cockpit feel and what Jaguar calls muscular haunches. But I find the new car's relative restraint almost as seductive as the E-Type's lean, steroid-induced physique. I should tell you that this car has another name. It's called Jack the Jag. The owner named it after his grandfather. Ian, I know this is a 1970s model and it was a left hooker when you bought it, but what condition was it in? Oh, very poor, really. I had to renew the floors, boot floor offside wing and generally strip it down and rebuild everything. How long did it take? Three and a half years. And how much is it worth now? It's insured for 25,000. Well, can I have a drive of it? Don't think so, Eamon. How about if we offer you the chance to drive the XK8? OK. In the past, we've criticised Jaguar for a number of things, such as poor legroom and irrational positioning of some switches. Well, this time they've got it right. Of course, the back's hopelessly cramped, but up here where it counts, there's excellent legroom and everything comes readily to hand. So what else have we got? Fly-off handbrake, deep-set instruments, a new five-speed auto shift, there isn't a manual option, and a good mixture of leather and fabric trim. Press this button and the roof goes down in 20 seconds. And no, it can't be opened by a jealous passenger as an air brake on the motorway. At speeds of more than 10 miles an hour, the hood just doesn't operate. Hood up and you'll have to reverse using your side mirrors. Hood down and there's still plenty of boot space for more than just the tonneau cover. You have to put the hood down yourself on this one, but who cares? Once you've climbed over the sill, it's still a bit of a squeeze if you like to drive with straight legs. Now, what have we got? chrome handbrake but after that it's black black and black four manual gears but nowhere to put your left leg three windscreen wipers and a gorgeous view along that bonnet okay jack off we go this car is quiet and elegant but if you put your faith in the traction control and floor it you're gone with a growl more sensibly driven, this car will suit the driver who likes the gentle touch. It takes light pedal pressure down below and has well-weighted power steering on top. The ride's firm but never jars and the auto shift's really smooth. But deep engineering aside, this car gives you all the right signals. It makes you feel secure, in control and very, very smug. Listen to that. The XK engine sounds as though it can go from 0 to 140 in top which is just as well, because I'm having a bit of trouble finding third. Serious impressions? Well, the steering's a bit heavy, but the bonnet does get shorter the longer you drive it. Corners can be a problem, not because of the handling. The handling's fine, just you catch your knuckles here. Luckily, the brakes are good and the ride is firm. Having said all that, it's remarkably rattle and vibration-free.